here in the Business Insurance Zone with me, Steve Savant, National Insurance Columnist and Financial Color Commentator. This week on The Biz, our year-end planning for 2012. And on today's show, the impact of insurance and annuities with special guest Ken Davis, CLU, CHFC, CFP, and CPA. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm your host, Steve Savant. We're broadcasting live to a nationwide audience of financial advisors right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's largest fountain. And today, day five with us, Ken Davis. Ken. Steven. Welcome again. again. Well, all week we've been talking about this tax, that tax, the fiscal cliff. What's going to happen? We don't know. I wish we had little, you know, crystal balls mm -hmm. and you know, make some kind of a prediction, but we don't. But what we are trying to do is plan either side of the cliff and try to bridge the cliff in some way. And we can't always do it, but today's show, we're talking about how can I use tax advantage insurance products like annuities, MEC life insurance contracts, and non-MEC life insurance contracts. If we pay higher taxes, if we're having huge passive income bump up, if our people at capital gains, when the bigger, more affluent clients are being going to pay between 20 and 24%, because of these two combined stealth taxes, so, so to speak, we're going to be, our products are going to be, wow, front and center. Well, no doubt. And, and uh, whether you like the current administration or not, the, it's a major gift to our industry. Oh, boy. The, the increased taxes and everything else makes our products that much more available. You and I have been working on how we use life insurance, MEX, and annuities for years mm -hmm. on how to utilize them correctly to reduce taxation. Well. We're, I think we're going back into an era much like we had in the 70s where we had mm. high tax rates and tax planning was really important and we all spent a lot more time on it. Well, mm. we're going to have to do that. And because there's not that much in the way of deductions, we don't mm. have tax shelters like we once had on real estate and oil and gas and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. What we have are pension plans, retirement plans, and we have tax deferral. Well, there's limits on what you can put in your qualified plans, mm -hmm. uh, especially for owners and key employees. So what's left? Well, tax deferral. Mm -hmm. Life insurance, annuities, modified endowment contracts all give us tax deferral. And what's interesting is when you really think about life insurance and compare it to a Roth IRA, which mm -hmm. a lot of people are really excited about, Roth IRAs have no deduction up front, tax deferral in between, and tax redistribution. If structured properly and the cost of insurance minimized, life insurance can play the same role without the same kind of limits or requirements that, mm -hmm. that the uh, Roth does. So the, you know, that's a great opportunity. In a corporate context, your key employees that are in high brackets, maybe this is a good time to be looking at employee benefits of executive compensation mm -hmm. and using 162 bonus, double bonus types of things. So we have the products mm -hmm. that are suddenly even that much more attractive than cap gain and some of the other things that are not going to be hit. And I just want to remind you, the person who just gave that monologue is a CPA. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Ken's been teaching at the CPA Society and on all these things on life insurance annuities. I have to say, anytime I've seen Ken teach any fiduciary, and we were just in Boston about mm -hmm. a month ago yeah. where we taught at a regional meeting of CPAs, they are in shock and awe when he turns out the 1040 balance sheet. And by the way, I'm going to throw this in as a show giveaway say, Steve, I'd like to see the 1040 overlay. It's by one of our great carriers. This is a great piece. We showed it mm -hmm. to the people mm -hmm. in Boston. Mm -hmm. The CPAs love this. This is how to use our tax advantage insurance products with the 1040 and show how much power tax deferral, and sometimes if, if it's done right, tax free from life insurance from non-MEC contracts, how powerful it can be. Let me jump in here, Steve. You know, my observation of our industry is we think we, we have to live in fear of the gatekeepers. That you know, too many times we bring a proposal to the client, looks great, then they bring it to the CPA or attorney and mm -hmm. they, they cut it down and it's gone. Well, the fact is that CPAs, a lot of them, don't understand insurance or the tax benefits. They have a jaundiced eye towards them. However, there are great tax opportunities and if you do it right, mm -hmm. you don't try to maximize your commission, you try to reduce the commission, maximize your internal rates of return, you actually empirically show mm -hmm. the CPA that you can get a decent return mm -hmm. after all fees and expenses, and I know because I've done this with them, they can become your ally instead of your foe. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is if you try to do an in run around them and you're talking serious mm -hmm. uh, premium, the client's gonna go to the CPA whether you want them to or not. Mm -hmm. They won't tell you necessarily, so why not just include them in the mm -hmm. whole planning process 
uh, and especially with the tax laws going the way there, it become more and more important mm. in this whole process. Well, think about this. Ken and I did a complete week series on how to market to fiduciaries. If you want to go back out to our site, www.brokersalliance.com, as soon as you come to our homepage, click on the, on, the red on-demand video button, hit our archives, pull that up, because what he's talking about is we found that they like two things, internal rate of return on the illustrations and expense loads exposed. Those two things can get you in the door faster than any fast foot or even, as you said, trying to go around the gatekeeper. Well, and we have a tendency, we've been trained as salespeople to uh, show the pluses of whatever we're mm -hmm. selling and we tend to, to not bring up the things that are, are more negative mm -hmm. and allow the client to ask and then you know we, we offer them. I think what you have to do is you have to actually lead with your negatives. You have to put it on the table so mm -hmm. that you demonstrate to them you're not trying to hide anything that you're actually going to show them how mm -hmm. to look at this appropriately and then talk about the benefits. And I know that sounds uh, counterintuitive, but the fact is that works for me. When I, when I go into it and, t and just put it right on the table and say, here's the issues, this is how we mitigate it, then instead of being on the defensive, I'm on the offensive. I think it's interesting to note that I, we just won a monster case, and I'm talking 60000 a target premium, on an income scenario, and I brought up the bad boy years of the S&P 2001, 2, and 3, and 2008. And the CPA said to me on the phone, Steve, how do you get around this when you're using arbitrage loans? Isn't it expensive? Because in bad boy years, you don't get anything credited. And I said, ah, that's when we punt and use withdrawals to basis. How can we have forgotten such a simple idea of employment, which we used to do all the time until participating loans? Right. Remember, there's a lot on the table that we can talk to the fiduciary market about and things that really work. When we come back from the break, we're going to continue our discussions on how to use insurance products to respond to the fiscal cliff. And don't forget to enroll in IULUniversity.com for the best training, education, sales support when it comes to life insurance for retirement income. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Did you know the average 401k runs out of money just seven to eight years into retirement? Time Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, and many other publications have warned of the difficulty of saving with a 401k. But what if there was a way to create tax-free lifetime retirement income with no stock market risk? Good news, there is. You know, living in fear of the next market dive is not the way I want to live my life. Why would I go out there and take on risk when I don't need to? I have a lot less stress knowing I can't lose any more of my retirement savings in the stock market. Call now to receive your free, no obligation analysis of what this retirement vehicle could do for you. A comparison to your current retirement plan and a free video that explains this exciting opportunity. Start planning a retirement you can enjoy instead of worrying about future tax increases and stock market losses. Creating income that will last your entire life is the most important thing you'll ever do. Take control of your future. Call now for your free analysis, comparison, and video. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant with Ken Davis. And remember, you can order today's giveaway at the biz at brokersalliance.com. And I'm going to give away not only the 2012 end of the year planning guide, but I want to also give away the 1040 overlay, which some of this we're going to talk about in the second half again. This is huge because it shows using annuities, using modified endowment contracts for life insurance and non-modified endowment contracts with life insurance, all placed there so you can overlay it and see the tax impact. And remember, because we are talking about taxes, always consult your tax advisor before moving forward with anything here on our show. And of course, if you're FINRA licensed, always, always, always check in with your compliance department before moving forward. Ken, let's talk a little bit about it because I noticed on your thing here, we did talk about Roths, you know, when you were talking about it, but people are talking about conversions. Should I be converting to a Roth right now? I mean, end of the year, is it a good deal? Is it a bad deal? Well, considering tax rates could go as high as 39.6 next year, and it may force people into higher adjusted gross income or modified adjusted gross income and have the 3.8% Obama tax and higher Medicare premium, stuff like that. Yeah, do if you're going to do it, this is a better yeah, year than next, it, most right? likely. We don't know if those rates are going to go into force, but heck, why not? Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is, uh, we have, we've missed on the Roth conversions the fact that 
we're not only looking at the tax rate, but the effective tax rate. Mm. Look at the effect of Medicare premiums, uh, taxation, Social Security income. Next year, potentially, the deduction for medical expenses, the AGI limit, goes from 75 to 10%. Oh. It's already at 10% for alternative minimum tax. So, yes, this year is a good time to do it. And because we're talking about product, maybe the client should start looking at this at age 60 after the 10% penalty is mm -hmm. gone. Fate, take it out in five-year increments and feed a life insurance policy that, as we've discussed, works similarly to mm -hmm. the uh, Roth IRA type concept and uh, may have substantial additional benefits. Obviously, the life insurance to provide for the family is a mm -hmm. legacy. So if there's desire for legacy and higher income and tax benefits and stuff, life insurance may be a better conversion partner mm -hmm. than the Roth itself. Mm -hmm. I noticed that we're really starting to push the 1035 exchange from regular annuities to annuities that carry long-term care riders. And you seem to be really on this. You really, I noticed in your brief, you're, this is one of the things you really like to focus on. Well, what's interesting is one of the big negatives of annuities has always been, gee, I get tax deferral, but then, dang, if I've got to take money out, I got to pay taxes on it, right? What you, but why are you taking money out for? What are you taking money out well, for? Well, and, yeah. and so if you've got various pots of money and you're in retirement, and you have some medical expenses not covered by Medicare or some other, you know, benefit, uh, you know, in particular long-term care, long-term care comes out tax-free out of these annuities. It, it, it's like we've been searching for, for mm -hmm. the years, the holy grail is tax, you know, tax deduction up front and then tax-free at the end. Well, we don't get a tax deduction up front on annuities, obviously, but we got tax mm -hmm. deferral. And now we get tax-free distributions off the annuity because of long-term care benefits. Mm -hmm. I think if you're buying, if you have a, an annuity and your annuity really isn't going to be used for income anyways, if you're deferring it anyways, this is an excellent way to turn that into a, from an ordinary income tax issue to a tax-free indemnification pay for LTC benefits. Did you hear the disclaimer there? Because I just want to make sure that everybody understands that if you do this right, I mean, people are learning how to play this game using annuities correctly with LTC riders that dovetails into the Pension Protection Act of 2006, that plus non-MEC life insurance. And there's all kinds of ways those two products then don't show up on your balance sheet for Social Security provisional income tests. You could be, ta you could be taking out your annuity to pay for your LTC indemnification reimbursement right? And your tax-free income coming from life and still getting your Social Security coming out free. Well, and I particularly like uh, to focus on the MEC a little bit because, mm -hmm. that, you know, it, when that came out, oh my gosh, got to avoid MEC, got to avoid MEC. Well, the fact of the matter is, remember that MEC, while it, it acts like an annuity during lifetime for distributions, mm -hmm. when you get to death, it's tax-free death benefit. So, mm -hmm. where you've got that client that just got money sitting uh, that would sit in accounts, till the mm -hmm. day they pass away and goes to the kids. You know, you get the father and the mother, and I'm sorry to stereotype, but the reality mm -hmm. is when we work with our clients, mom wants to take care of the kids and dad wants to take care of them. He's the provider, he's thinking about having enough income, not running out mm -hmm. of it. Mom's saying, yeah, that's good, but I still love my children and I want to do this. Well, mm -hmm. the mech is really that compromise. Mm -hmm. They get to build up tax deferred, that, that money's there as a safety net. Mm -hmm. And if they do take it out, obviously during lifetime it's taxed. However, if they don't, need it and they and they don't think it's going to mm -hmm. need it it's, it's appropriate to be looking at some legacy planning mm -hmm. and the mech is a great way to do that if if i have a choice of using a mech single deposit as you're su mm -hmm. suggesting i'm wondering if i should start looking at indexing versus current company assumption ul because you get a little more pop well yes you do and and also on our life products we have uh long-term care type or chronic illness mm -hmm. writers as well and so yes and and Yes, there's taxation, but if you don't, you know, if you're older ages, we know mm -hmm. it takes about 15 years, 12 to 15 years, before we can really start to take loans out and make the, the policy work. Well, if you've got somebody 60 years old, maybe you should punt and go back to the modified endowment contract with a single premium, mm -hmm. because now you have a lot more cash inside building tax deferred than you would have mm -hmm. if you've staged it in over five years. So, you know, we've got to crunch the numbers again. Mm -hmm. We've got to look and see what the alternatives are and, and the ages and the situation and see what the needs are and if there's a legacy uh, need there as well. When I think about it, I just saw a report that we did, Ken and I did last week, that said the average American couple during retirement is gonna spend 240,000 
on long-term care and medical bills mm. out of pocket. And that includes all the legislation that's coming online in 2014. When we come back next week, we're going to be talking about charitable giving with Ken Davis. We'll tell you all the giving, the Santa issues, holiday, all with us with Ken Davis. You can go out to our website at www.brokersalliance.com. Hit the red on-demand video to watch all our shows. That's the buzz for the biz for today. Get in the zone, the business insurance zone. The Biz is brought to you by Brokers Alliance, a national leader in insurance products, support services, and educational workshops. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use.